Welcome to this author's interview series. My name is Christina Theodoraki. I'm editor of Small Business Economics and Entrepreneurship Journal. And I have the very great honor to interview today an important person in entrepreneurship and small business with whom we have two common things. First, he has also origins from Greece. And second, he is also editor of Small Business Economics. Therefore, I have the great, great honor to interview today. Alexander Kritikos from German Institute of Economic Research, DIW Berlin in Germany. Welcome, Alexander, and thank you so much for participating to this interview series and for accepting to share your knowledge with us today. Hi, Christina. It's a really pleasure to see you and to have a short exchange with you on this, on this topic we really love to analyze. Thanks for having I'm, me. <laughs> I'm delighted to, to have this interview with, uh, with you today. And actually, Alexander is going to give us more insight on the paper they've just published in Small Business Economics, which is entitled Self-Efficacy and Entrepreneurial Performance of Startups. Uh, I was saying that it was recently published in Small Business Economics in August 2023. This paper is also covered with uh, Marco Caliendo, Daniel Rodriguez, and Claudia Steer from University of Potsdam. So we'll start my first question. Could you please, Alexander, tell me what is your article about? Sure. The good thing is the title says everything. So it is indeed about self-efficacy, how whether it matters. When people start thinking about uh, becoming an entrepreneur, starting an entrepreneurial business, starting their own business, and analyzing not whether self-efficacy influences the starting, but whether it also influences the further development of uh, their firms. And this is what we analyzed, and we found indeed that it has a great impact on, on, let's say, the most important measures which we know from entrepreneurial activities. So, first of all, we observe that self-efficacy, which is something like um, uh, persistingly perform difficult questions, coping with difficult uh, with adversity, also giving the other people the feeling that uh, I believe in my business, so that all these kind of uh, traits that they impact the later development of my business. So if I am self-efficacy when I start the business, it increases the probability that I will survive. And it increases it significantly um, by a, a, a fairly large amount of, of, of uh, probability. Secondly, it doesn't only increase the probability that I stay in this business because I am able to treat, uh, to, to, uh, to care uh, with difficult systems to, to um, cope with difficult situations. It also help, can help me to increase my income. It also increases the probability that um, I hire people. And most importantly, it also increases the probability that I will become innovative. So people who are self-efficacy are also able with higher probability to file a patent or similar things to make something new where in particular it's important to be, to be self-efficacy because filing and painting really takes time, needs to, uh, to accept drawbacks, needs to convince others, etc. So bottom line, self-efficacy is a trade which has so far not been investigated in the context of entrepreneurial development and we show that it is important for the most important performance measures we, we know from entrepreneurial activities. Thank you very much, Alexander. I'm excited to hear about self-efficacy and performance of the startups. Let me ask you now the difficult questions that all the editors are very, very uh, keen to, to have a, a clear and explicit response about the contribution of the study. So please tell me why this article is important, what we learn uh, from this article that we didn't know before, and why self-efficacy becomes an important element to study in relationship with performance of startups. Yeah, um, I think this is a really important question because there are many papers out who deal with uh, self-efficacy. And the important point is, and this is where we differentiate from other papers, there are two ways of measuring it. The one is what we call entrepreneurial self-efficacy, and the other one is what we call general self-efficacy. And while there's a lot of research on entrepreneurial self-efficacy on entrepreneurial outcomes, there's basically no, no research doing what we have done so far. 
So where's the difference? Uh, entrepreneurial self-efficacy is something which you can learn. So it's about learning marketing activities. So it's about tasks, learning um, uh, also management, learning to, to have uh, financial control, etc. So there are certainly important things about entrepreneurial self-efficacy, but these are learnable things. And, um, and here we saw indeed that um, individuals who were having this entrepreneurial self-efficacy uh, on high scores on that were good in becoming entrepreneurs and remaining entrepreneurs, or also by learning it. And now we look into a different thing. We look into a trait, a personality characteristic, which is probably not changing over time, which is probably something which is within us, which can be maybe trained over a couple of years, but not be learned. And so this is the, the I would say, the really important difference to all the research which has been done before. We look into personality characteristics and we show that beyond the personality characteristics which have been analyzed so far in the context of entrepreneurship, and there are a, a couple of personality characteristics, this one has not been investigated so far, and we show it's important that we that so far it was missed an important point, one personality characteristic which is important for entrepreneurial activities. Thank you very much, Alexander, for this very explicit response. And let me... Um... Uh, bring you now to the early beginning, this Eureka moment. What happened to this moment that you did? You found this idea. Where did this idea came from? What was this moment that you decided this is a great uh, paper, a great project to work on, and it will make an impact uh, in research? Yeah, um, this traces back indeed a couple of years um, because. Uh, um, the, the data are based on our own uh, on our own data set, which we had a couple of years ago um, put together when we were evaluating uh, various um, uh, entrepreneurial startup subsidies. And uh, there we indeed thought it might be really important to also include a short battery of um, in total seven items and ask people and add, so to say, this new research and ask people about their, their self-efficacious uh, uh, scores. And, um, and indeed, we, we made this, I'm happy about that, looking backwards, we made this really very planned. We introduced um, seven well-established items, which were, had been proven to be a good measure of, on, uh, of, of general self-efficacy. And indeed, this was, so to say, the beginning of the whole um, venture of writing this paper uh, when we, we thought now it's about time to see whether indeed it matters and we found it mattered. Let me now tell, uh, talk about the, um, the future of this topic. Uh, and actually, uh, when we write the paper and when we dig deeper, we find what we didn't do, um, what did, whether the elements we didn't dig enough or we have uh, we discover new avenues of research. Uh, how do you see what do you do expect for the future of self-efficacy and performance? What future researchers should uh, further explore or study? Is there any ideas you continue after the the publication of uh, this uh, paper? Sure, absolutely. Um... I would say that, and this is the biggest limitation which we have, but also out to the whole research project, um, the time lag uh, between the startup and, and the measure is still relatively short. We have 19 months between the starting point and, and the measure of, of all these outputs. And um, I think it would be really important to, to have a longer time period uh, in, in future research available, meaning that we should also be able to evaluate whether this uh, important trait also matters after, let's say, three, four, five years um, uh, for entrepreneurial activities, and maybe whether it also matters in performance measures which are more relevant in the medium term. So when it comes to firm growth, of course, we have some indications that um, it, it is important Think about innovation, think about uh, hiring the first employees. But uh, looking further on, it would also be important to see whether these innovations had been implemented, had been successfully implemented, and to what extent uh, self-efficacy, again, their matters. That's the one thing. 
And I think a second point which we started digging into, it, where it needs a lot of more research, is um, we differentiated between male and female entrepreneurs. We were happy to have observations for both. And um, the interesting point which we found is that with respect to general self-efficacy, there is no difference between the two gender. While with respect to entrepreneurial self-efficacy, there's a huge difference between the two genders. So male entrepreneurs usually score higher in entrepreneurial self-efficacy than females. This is what we cannot confirm for general self-efficacy, which is another reason why it's important to look into this personality characteristics in, instead, of, in, instead of this task-oriented uh, measure. Now, what would be interesting to see is um, whether this difference um, allows us also to understand um, what exactly the two, how the, exactly the two measures differentiate and whether, for instance, females who score low in the beginning in entrepreneurial self-efficacy do better catch up because they have general self-efficacy on a high level, but entrepreneurial self-efficacy on a low level, whether they easier catch up because of this or because of other reasons. So, Understanding basically, in particular for females, the interaction between general and entrepreneurial self-efficacy, I think would be a second really important question to, question to look into. This is great avenues for uh, future research, Alexander, and thank you very much for sharing. I hope uh, you continue to collect data with the data set and we'll see uh, more studies in a longitudinal setting. Uh, but also, if you allow me also to add another uh, avenue that could be also the um, uh, identify the self-efficacy on performance and the relevance of the context and how context may affect uh, these uh, personal characteristics, and probably you can make the links. I'm very defender of the uh, uh, entrepreneurial context or the entrepreneurial ecosystem, and how see how um, personal characteristics may impact firm um, outcomes and performance during the uh, firm's growth. So I would be more mm -hmm. than happy to collaborate and develop also some uh, research uh, discussion on this uh, point, or also see uh, some of these uh, discussions in the future. Coming to so, the. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> so we have a research plan, a plan so yeah. this is how our research project starts, of course. Indeed. <laughs> so we, we're delighted to see in the future uh, this collaboration uh, for, um, provided inspiring insight for research and continue this discussion. Coming to the conclusion, please tell us how this uh, research, your research, uh, the, the article provide and the findings you find uh, can be applicable for for, for practitioners. Do you have any special advices or insights that you can share in implementing and use your findings? Yes, I think um, one can use this as, let's say, usually you can use all kinds of, of uh, personality characteristics in, in uh, implementing them in coaching offers. Um, and the point here is, uh, like I said before, um, Personality characteristics can be changed easily, but you can use them to adopt your learning plans on each level of, for instance, in this case, your level of self-efficacy. You need to train people in a different way if they are scoring low in self-efficacy or whether they are scoring high in self-efficacy. And uh, maybe, and that's the second thing which you always uh, can use is, People might also sometimes not be aware of their self, of, of their own uh, personality characteristics. So if you find out that they, people are have high levels of self-efficacy but are not aware of this of this high scores, that they are believing they cannot stand through such difficult times, then you can simply also uh, create awareness among them that they are having certain personality characteristics and create, so to say, coaching offers around uh, um, around the scores which you observe with with each and every person you you coach um, and in this case in this sense i believe introducing and making use of information about personality characteristics is always very helpful particular also when we look in this let's say crucial personality characteristic which is important for your further entrepreneurial development 
Thank you very much, Alexander. We're coming to the end of this interview. It was a really pleasure. I really uh, enjoyed discussing and hear more about cycling efficiency and uh, performance of startups. Uh, a very inspiring research. And I also would like to uh, invite all of our uh, readers and listeners to download your paper from the website of Springer. And actually, your paper is open access, meaning yes. that all um, all people interested to explore more and hear more and read this article, they can freely download from the website of uh, Springer. So thank you very much for uh, sharing your insights today with us. It was a great pleasure. Thank you for having given me the chance.